Tonight we have another of our 20 greats, Laura Z. Hobson's Gentleman's Agreement. A 20th Century Fox film based on this exciting novel won three Academy Awards and was acclaimed the best motion picture of 1948. And as our stars of Gentleman's Agreement, we have Ray Milland and in her original role, Dorothy McGuire, who will join me later for a preview of A Man Called Peter a new 20th Century Fox picture starring Richard Dodd and Gene Peters. But right now, here's our good friend, Ken Carpenter. One of Gentleman's Agreement, starring Ray Milland as Phil and Dorothy McGuire as Kathy. New York City, headquarters of the celebrated magazine, Smith's Weekly. In the editor's office... John Minifee has welcomed an old friend. Finding your way around town all right, Phil? Well, almost. Good. Mother and kid like New York, huh? Yes, and they like the apartment, too. Thanks. Good. How is your mother, Phil, and the boy? No, they're both fine, Mr. Minifee. Yeah. The boy, uh, does he miss his mother? Well, Tommy's ten now. It's six years since Helen died. I, I don't think he remembers it too well. Yeah. Well, now, what about tonight? You didn't give me an answer yet, you know. Thanks, but some other time, maybe. Nonsense. I won't ask you another time. Just a few friends coming over. (laughs) I thought you brought me to New York to do some writing. And I did. Now, you get good and comfortable because I'm going to talk to you about it for about an hour, maybe two hours. So, I've had an idea. An idea. I hate introducing people. Anyway, Phil, I've saved the best for last. Kathy, this is Mr. Green, my niece, Miss Lacey. How do you do? How do you do? Sit down, Mr. Green. Yeah, sit Thank down. You. I'll bring you a cocktail. Well, Mr. Green, I haven't read everything you've written, but what I have has been, well, very exciting. Exciting and honest. Thank you. You mind telling people what you're writing now? Uh, let me tell well, you. Uh, well, uh, I've asked Phil to do a series on anti-Semitism. Oh. I've been wanting to do it for some time. Well, do I get a credit line? You? Yes, don't you remember? I was the one who suggested Why, it. sure. I knew somebody was after me, but I forgot who. Here's your drink, Phil. You know, I'm always stealing ideas without knowing. You know, it's funny, Miss Lacey. Hmm. You suggesting the series. Is it? Why? No. Lots of reasons. Mm, you make up your mind too quickly, Mr. Green. Uh, about women, anyway. I saw you do it as soon as you sat down. Oh, it's that apparent, huh? Mm-hmm. Let's see. I'm uh, a little too well-bred, artificial, a trifle absurd, typical New York, hmm? No, I, I didn't have time for all that. Oh, no. yes, you did. I even left out a few things, such as... Uh... <laughs> Look, I give up, Miss Lacey. You win. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll tell you some more. I'm divorced. I work, hmm? I help run a nursery school. Oh, what else? Do you want just anything? Just anything. Well, I'm supposed to be a very good husband. Hey, Phil, Dinner. Come along, Mr. Green. All right. Well, Phil, have a nice time with the Minities last night? Hmm? Oh, oh, yes. Yes, Mom. Very, very nice. Uh, hey, Tommy, you'll be late for school. Pop, what are you going to write about this time? Uh, Mr. Minifee wants me to do a series on anti-Semitism. Oh? You don't sound very enthusiastic. I'm not. What's anti-Semitism? Well, it's, uh... It's when some people don't like other people because they're Jews. Why? Are they bad? Well, some are, sure. Some are not. Just like everybody else. But why don't some people like Jews? 
Well, you see, Tom, some people hate Catholics and some hate Jews. And no one hates us because we're Americans. Well, no, it isn't quite that thing. You see, one thing is your country, like America or France or Germany, but the other thing, well, that's religion, like the Jewish or the Catholic or the Protestant religion. You see, religion hasn't anything to do with country. Do you get it? Uh-huh. Well, see you tonight, Pop. Bye, Grandma. Yeah. You know, that kid's going to wreck me yet. Still, about the assignment. You're disappointed? Yes, I am. I wanted to work on something I'd know people would read. You mean there's enough anti-Semitism in real life without people reading about no, it? No. But, uh, but what can I say that hasn't been said before? Maybe it hasn't been said well enough. If it had, you wouldn't have had to try to explain it to Tommy just now. It would be nice sometime not to have to explain it to kids. Yeah, yeah it would be nice. I'm surprised, Phil, happily surprised. I thought you were going to refuse the assignment. What changed your mind? Oh, a couple of things, Mr. Minifee. Uh, <laughs> you know, I may put that niece under contract. Inspiration department. Well, wait a minute. Now, it wasn't Kathy. It was my kid. I tried to explain it to him this morning, and it was kind of tough. Anyway, I want to do the series. Now, I'll need your research department facts and figures. I don't want and... facts and figures, Phil. I don't need you for that. I, I want an angle. Uh-huh. Some dramatic device to humanize it, to get it red. Mm -hmm. You don't want much. You just want the moon. Well, there's much more to this than just the crackpot angle. Forget the extremist. It's the wider angle I want to get at. Go to the source. Yeah, all right. I'll knock it around. Uh, uh, before you go, you uh, don't happen to want Kathy's phone number, do you? Region 70493. We're having dinner. <laughs> I always like to go to the right to the source, you know? <laughs> You feel telephone. Okay. He'd be right here, Kathy. I wish you'd get him to take you out to dinner again. He's not fit to live with. Oh, still no angle for a series. Hmm? Well, he keeps working, but here he comes. Oh, stop conspiring. Hiya. Hi. Sounds like an unhappy writer. I just wish I were dead, that's all. Nothing on paper. Hmm? Not the syllable. Well, I'm sorry I interrupted you. Well, I've told you. If you don't call, I just keep wondering why. So it works out as an interruption either way. How many interruptions do you want? I'll thank you to call me five or six times. It's your fault I'm in this chair. I'll remember that. Goodbye, Phil. Goodbye, Kathy. Phil, isn't it always tough at the start? Sure, it's always tough, but never like this. I've tried everything, Ma. You know, it's like beating your head against a concrete... Oh. Oh. Ma. Hey, Ma, what's the matter? Uh, I don't know. I feel so bad. I feel... Phil. You're sure it's not serious, Doctor? There's nothing at all to worry about, Mr. Green. People with hearts outlive everyone else if they take care. Just keep your mother in bed for a few days. Phil? Come on in. I know the way out. I'll stop by tomorrow. Thank you. Everything okay, Ma? Not looking like Hamlet. I feel wonderful. Where's Tommy? I sent him to the drugstore. Poor little kid. I must have scared him to death. Well, what do you think you did to me? Phil, haven't you had enough for one day? Please don't try to work anymore. Look, I'm through trying. As a matter of fact, I've decided to phone Menifee. There's a certain virtue in knowing when you're licked, Ma. Why are you licked? I just can't find the angle. But you got the angle before. Every article you ever wrote, the right angles got in some. But I didn't beat my brains out looking for them. When I wanted to find out about a scared guy in a jalopy, I bought some old clothes and a broken down car and took Route 66 myself. I lived with the Yogis. I ate what they ate. I found the answer in my own guts, not somebody else's. Yes, Phil. That's right. And the coal mine series. 
I worked in a mine. I slept in a shack. I didn't try to dig into a coal miner's heart. I was a miner. And that's why I... Hey, Ma, that's it. That's the angle. It's the only way. What's the only way? I'll be Jewish. Well, all I got to do is say it. Nobody knows me around here. I can just say it. I can live it myself for six weeks, six months, however long it'll take. That's it, Ma. It's a cinch. The best medicine I could have. Look, will you keep my secret if you meet anybody? You're Jewish. I am too, I guess. I gotta make a phone call right away. Why don't you ask Kathy to come over here? How'd you know I wasn't gonna phone Menifee? Oh, dope. Nobody phones an editor with that look on his face. <laughs> Apartment's beautiful. Now, tell me about your mother. Oh, she's much better. She's sleeping. Now, let's have a drink. No, 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 thanks. Just some sherry. Mm, you are still not telling me the angle, and you sounded so excited on the telephone. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I thought I'd spill it the minute you got inside the door. Mm, <laughs> it really must be something to get you like this. Well, there'll, there'll be stumbling blocks, but I don't care. Mm. But I, I'll lick them when I get to them. And I... Say, you really don't want any sherry, do you? No. Nope. Well, neither do I. Oh, Kathy. Don't. Don't say anything. Just let me kiss you. Bill, please. Kathy. Oh, I, I'm, I'm just trying to think. Well, I mean, marriage can be such a good way to live. Mm. All these years I've been hoping. I've kept hoping, too. But when you... Made a mistake once, like I have. Oh, are you are you afraid? I mean, you you're not sorry. Mm. I I mean about Tommy. Oh, Phil, I'm glad. It's almost as if my marriage hadn't been wasted, as if I had a son growing up for me. No, darling, I'm not afraid. Find an angle, Phil. When do you start? Well, what's wrong with right now? I'll get you an office with the secretary. Oh, um, about the secretary, uh, she'd have to know, wouldn't she? Why would she have to know? As far as she's concerned, I'm Jewish. Yeah, of course. Well, now, how about lunch? Chance to meet some of the staff. And Irving Wiseman is lunching with us. It might be good for you to know him. Big industrialist, isn't he? Yeah, come on. Uh, You'll like him a lot. Sorry, we're late, boys. Sorry, Irving. This is Phil Green, Irving Wiseman. Mr. Wiseman? Lou Jordan, our personnel manager. How are you? Joe Tingler, our photographer. And Bert McCartney, layout. And last, as a kind of a dessert, Phil, this is Anne Detry, our fashion editor. She eats men alive. <laughs> well, thank you. So you can sit next to her. Thank you again. Well, boys, Mr. Green is, uh... Gonna do a series for us on anti Semitism. Really, John? Another one? I think it's a very bad idea. Oh, why? Because it'll only stir it up more. I say let us handle the problem our own way. We know from bitter experience the less talk there is about it, the better. Sure. Pretend it doesn't exist, huh? Keep silent. Let the rabble rousers do all the talking, huh? No, sir. We're going to call a spade a spade, and I think it's high time and a fine idea. So do I. You sound pretty hot about it, Mr. Green. I feel pretty hot about it. And I don't think it has anything to do with the fact that I'm Jewish myself. Uh, uh, waiter, waiter, how about some service over here, huh? Nice going, Phil. <laughs> Secretary, Mr. Green, Elaine Wells. How do you do? May I come in? Of course. Now, the uh, first thing I want to do is write a lot of letters. They'll go to clubs, resorts, interviews for jobs, apartments for lease, applications to medical schools. I've got a whole list here somewhere. Yes, sir. Now, I'll write each letter on blank stationery and send two to each address. Two? Yeah. 
One of them outside Skylar Green and the other Philip Greenberg. Greenberg? Yeah, just so there'll be no doubt about it. I changed my name, Mr. Green. Did you? No. Green's always been my name. What was yours? Wolofsky. Estelle Wolofsky. I did exactly what you're doing. I wrote the same firm two letters. I sent the Elaine Wells one after they said there was no opening to Estelle Wolofsky. And I got the job, too. Do you know what firm that was? This firm, Smith's Weekly. Does Mr. Menifee know about this? Oh, no. That's Mr. Jordan's department, personnel. Oh, is this the list I'm to write to, sir? Huh? Oh, yes. Yes. Now, if you'll get your book, I'll start dictating the letters. Well, Doctor, how's my mother? Your mother can be up and about tomorrow. Oh, no, then. Fine, that's wonderful. Oh, uh, Doctor, would you mind if I had to see a good internist just to be on the safe side? Well, not at all. I'd suggest you take her to Mason Van Wick. Well, one of my friends recommended a Dr. Abrams. Uh, Abrams? Yeah, Jacob Abrams, Mount Sinai Hospital. Uh, Isn't he any good? Oh, yes, yes, of course. He's completely reliable. Not given to overcharging the way some do. You mean the way some doctors do, or the way some Jewish doctors do? Well, I, I suppose some of us do it, too, not just the chosen people. Yeah. Well, if Abrams doesn't impress me, I'll try, Dr. Van Wick. I have no special loyalty to Jewish doctors, simply because I'm Jewish myself. No. No, of course not. Uh, well, good evening, Mr. Green. Uh, Instead of having dinner in some restaurant, you'll just have to resign yourself to my cooking. I am delighted, Kathy. Sit down. It's all a trap. I want to talk to you. Just talk. Huh? Mm-hmm. Not one bite to eat till you tell me your angle. Darling, do you realize I still don't know? Theo, tell me. Well, it's, it's really very simple. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to let everybody know I'm Jewish, that's all. Jewish? But you're not, Phil. Are you? Uh, not that it would make any difference to me, but you said I'm, I'm going to let everybody know as if you hadn't before and would now, so I, I, I just wondered. Phil, oh, well, you're annoyed with me. No. No, I was just thinking. Well, it's just that you caught me off guard. You don't think much of the angle, do you? Oh, I do, darling. It's, well, it's just that... Well, I, I, I think it'll mix everybody up. People won't know what you are. Of course, after the series, they'll know, but even so, it, it will keep cropping up, won't it? All right, let it crop up. Oh, must be out of my head. Let it is right. Who cares? Now, tell me some more. Well, to begin with, you have to promise not to give me away. No exceptions. Okay. Okay. What about the people at the magazine? Won't they talk? Well, no, they're not in on it. Only Mr. Minifee. And the rest all think you're Jewish? Look, Kathy, if this thing is going to work, the only chance is to go whole hog. Of course, I hadn't really seen it before. Well, I I, I didn't mean to be so sharp just now. I, I, I'm sorry. Dinner? Fine. <laughs> Like a brandy, Phil? Can I get some more coffee? No, no thanks. I, I think I'd better be getting along. Oh, so soon? Well, I want to look in on Ma before she gets to sleep. Of course. It's mighty fine dinner, Kathy. I, I'll call you tomorrow sometime. All right. Good night. Oh, oh just uh, buzz for the elevator. Good night, Phil. Going down, sir? Hmm? Oh, no, no, no thanks. 
I I forgot something. Kathy. Oh, darling. Darling, what are we doing? What are we doing to each other? I couldn't go away. Not like that. Oh, it's my fault, Kathy. I, I'm always weighing and judging. I'm such a solemn fool. Oh, but I should have said your idea was fine right away, and it is, darling. It's I don't, wonderful. I, I don't know what happened. I just felt insulted, and I, I couldn't let you off. I, I couldn't make it any easier for you. And all through dinner, I kept trying to read you to tell you how sorry I was, and I couldn't. Oh, I wanted you so to come back. I did come back, darling, and please, please let me come back, all of you. Act two of Gentleman's Agreement in just a moment. Here's Francis Scully with a hint about what's new in movies. 20th Century Fox has one that's new and exciting, Ken. It's Untamed, starring Jerome Power, Susan Hayward, and Richard Egan. Oh, well, the cast like that, I'd say it's off to a flying start. Oh, this one's a real thriller. It's about the pioneers who established the Dutch Free State in South Africa. Well, those Dutch settlers had their hands full with the Zulu tribes, didn't they? Oh, they certainly did. Some of the most exciting scenes are the ones showing the Zulus attacking the wagon trains carrying the settlers. Incidentally, thousands of real present-day Zulus now tamed, I might add, were used in filming those scenes. They were photographed right in South Africa. Well, I can just imagine what they'll be like in Cinemascope and Deluxe Color. Untamed looks like it'll interest everybody. Plenty of action and Tyrone Power and Susan Hayward to provide the romance. Good night, Francis. Good night, Ken. Right now, I have news of a Lieber Brothers contest that should interest every woman. The prizes are beautiful, beautiful minks. $150,000 worth. This is the second week of the contest, which runs for a month. And each week, three mink coats, 18 mink cape stoles, and 80 mink scarves will be given away. Each contest is a separate one, so enter every week and as many times as you'd like each week. Just complete the statement, I like Lux Soap Because, in 25 additional words or less. Your answer might be, I like Lux Soap because it's so mild and gentle. But to use your own words and give your own reasons. Send your answer with any three Lux Toilet Soap wrappers to Lux Contest, Box Number 1, New York 46, New York. Get an entry blank and the complete contest rules at your grocer's, or use a blank piece of paper. Be sure to send three Lux Toilet Soap wrappers with each entry. Entries for this week's contest must be postmarked no later than midnight, March 19th. That address again, Lux Contest, Box Number 1, New York 46, New York. Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act 2 of Gentleman's Agreement, starring Ray Milland as Phil and Dorothy McGuire as Kathy. A few days have gone by, and Philip Green, posing as a Jew, is finding it a simple matter to get the evidence he's looking for. And you can tie by those notes tomorrow, Miss Wales. It's pretty late. Uh, Mr. Green, is it true about Mr. Minifee? I mean, about the help-wanted ad he's running in the newspaper? Yes, yeah, it's true, all right. You... You told him about me? Yes, I did. From now on, every help-wanted ad will contain one sentence in big type. Religion is a matter of indifference to this office. He was a rather angry man, Miss Wells. But, Mr. Green, I... Well, you don't want things changed around here, do you? I mean, well, just let them get one of the kikey kinds in here and... Now, look, Miss Wells. Words like yid and kike make me kind of sick no matter who says them. Well, I only said it for a type. What do you mean by tight? Well, loud and, and... You know as well as I do the sort that starts trouble and the sort that doesn't, like you and me. You mean because we don't look especially Jewish because we're okay Jews? I didn't say that. I hate anti-Semitism, Miss Wales, and I hate it when it comes from you just as much as I hate it from a Gentile. Me? Why, Mr. Green... I'll see you tomorrow, Miss Wales. I'm going home. 
Oh, hello, Miss Jetry. How can you stride down the hall with such energy at the end of the day? <sighs> I'm bush. By the way, assuming I'm my vital young self again by tomorrow night, I'm giving a party. Can you come? Oh, thanks. I'd like to. May I bring my girl? Well, sure you can bring your girl. How's the series coming? Well, it's just coming. Good. Just don't let it interfere with tomorrow night. <laughs> Well, darling, how'd you like it? Anne's party. Mm-hmm. I like this best of all. I've got you alone now. You uh, don't have to rush home, do you, Phil? Uh-uh. <laughs> what about Anne? Do you like Anne? I hate her. She's much too fond of you. Jealous? Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> darling, I've got news for you. We're going to another party. I telephoned my sister from Anne, and... Phil, Jane's just aching to meet you, and they're giving a big party for us on Saturday. Fine. Phil, won't we have to let Jane and Harry in on it? I, I mean about you. But, Kathy, if I'm going to keep it a secret, But I... to be that inflexible. Now, darling, don't be angry, but I did tell Jane. Oh. What'd she say? Oh, she thought it was the cleverest way in the world to do research. Oh, you'll love her. Harry, too. You made them promise not to say anything. Well, I wouldn't tell them to, until they had. Oh, uh, all Jane asked was that you skip the whole thing for the party, and I said You that said I... no. You said he won't skip the whole thing for the party. No, I didn't. I said I'd ask you. You mean you think I should? Oh, darling, why do you always lose your sense of proportion whenever the subject comes up? You know how... Those suburban groups are, Connecticut, Claremont. Well, it would just start a whole mess for Jane and Harry, and for nothing. And if it were a mess for something? But, Phil, you're not Jewish. It would just ruin the party for Jane. Why can't I make you see that? I know, I promise, no exceptions, but it just seems so silly to start a thing for her up there when it's not true. Well, why not tell Jane just to call the party off? No, Phil. And besides... If, if we were to use my house up there next summer... Your house? Yes, it's not far from Jane's. And it will be our house, dear. It'd make... Well, it'd just make a... A thing, a mess, an inconvenience. Well, it would. For Jane and her husband or for you, too? I'd be so tensed up, I, I wouldn't have any fun either. Phil, if everything's going to be so edgy and solemn, I... I, I think I'd better go now. Good night, Kathy. Why can't I make you see that? I know, I promise, no exceptions, but it just seems so silly to start a thing for her up there when it's not true. Well, why not tell Jane just to call the party off? No, Phil. And besides, if, if we were to use my house up there next summer... Your house? Yes, it's not far from Jane's. And it will be our house, dear. It'd make... Well, it'd just make a... A thing, a mess, an inconvenience. Well, it would. For Jane and her husband or for you, too? I'd be so tensed up, I, I wouldn't have any fun either. Phil, if everything's going to be so edgy and solemn, I... I think I'd better go now. Good night, Kathy. Phil, telephone, Phil. If it's Kathy Martell or I'll... Phil, it's Dave, Dave Goldman. Dave, I thought he was in Europe. Where is he? Give me that phone. Hello? Don't you ever get up in the morning? Dave, oh, this is wonderful. Where are you? The Cardi Airport just got in, and I haven't had breakfast. Well, grab a cab and get right over here. Same address as in my letter, okay? Be right there. Wonderful. Yakety, yakety, yakety. Phil, for heaven's sake, let the poor fellow eat his breakfast. Look, he's had breakfast every day, but I haven't seen him for four years. Oh, it's wonderful, Dave. I mean what you said about bringing Carol and the kids. Dave. Well, what do you do, Dave? I mean, when you get out of the army, have you got a job lined up? Oh, big job. Best break I ever had. Firm in Connecticut. Got to find a place to live up there. 
going to spend my term in the league just concentrating on getting a house for us. We'll find something if we have to use dynamite. Meantime, you'll stay here. Oh, now, wait. Now, a... no arguments. You're talking to a civilian now. <laughs> well, boys, don't settle all the problems today. Save a couple for tomorrow. <laughs> don't worry, Mrs. Green. Well, come on now. Give. What do you mean, give? The series you're doing. What's it all about? Oh, we'll get to that later. Hey, what's eating you, Phil? You expecting a call? You keep looking at the phone. Oh, it's that obvious, huh? Well, I had a scrap with my girl. I, I guess I want her to be the one to phone. As for the series, well, I'm doing work on anti-Semitism with a special angle. Well, that's interesting. So fine. That's interesting. <laughs> Phil, it, it, it's just that... Well, I, I'm on the sidelines in anti-Semitism. It's your fight, brother. Okay, I get it. Now, l listen. I, I don't care about the Jews as Jews. Sure, they're my people, but I don't care. It, it's the whole thing, not just the poor, poor Jews. What's the special angle you've got? Oh, I'm saying I'm Jewish. And it works. Why, you fool, and it's working. Too well, having my nose rubbed in it. Yeah, I can guess. You're not insulated. You mean you can get indifferent to it? No, but you're telescoping a lifetime problem into, what, a few weeks? It just concentrates. It makes it hurt more. Now, what about your girl? Oh, just one of those things, I guess. You know, after six years, you sort of lose the instinct for marriage. Oh, baloney. Go on and call her. So you're right and she's wrong. So what? Okay, maybe I will. And wish me luck. I'm off to start house hunting. Look, call me at the office at 5.30. I'll phone Kathy and I'll get a hold of Ann Detry. She's a girl that works in the office. And we'll have a big celebration dinner. Okay. Say, can you imagine what it's going to be like? Being married again? <laughs> And you and Carol here, all of us together again? How about that? Well, first I gotta get a roof over Carol's head. I'll call you till 5.30. Okay. But where are you, Kathy? I've been trying to call you all day. I'm at my sister's, Jane. I came up to have it out with her. I couldn't call you until I fixed everything up. And, oh, darling, I was wonderful. I said all the things you would have wanted me to say. Phil. Why can I make myself clear to Jane and Harry when it's you I want to be clear with? Oh, because I'm so hard to get along with, baby. Like I told you, I can be such a solemn fool. <laughs> well, the party's tomorrow. and Take the three o'clock train. I'll, I'll meet you at the station. Oh, darling. I can breathe again. I wish it were tomorrow. So do I. Oh, I love you, Kathy. I love you, Cleo. More than ever. Kathy? Oh, there you are. Darling, about Phil, he's simply wonderful. Ah. I knew you'd like him, Jane. Where is he? In the house. Oh. Surrounded. <laughs> Say, can he charm them? Mm -hmm. Well, do you like the party? Mm -hmm. It's just like I hoped it would be. Incidentally, uh, aren't the Bascom's coming? Oh, didn't I tell you, dear Joe called? He's got that awful arthritis again. Oh? Well, what about the Howard and the, uh, the Burlicks? <laughs> they make me so mad. At the last minute, they decided to go to Hot Springs. I, I thought I'd mentioned it. Jane, look. I'm in this thing just as deeply as Phil. Darling, what do you mean? You know what I mean. The guests, our friends. You made sure, didn't you? That just the safe ones would be here. Kathy, you're mad. Maybe I am. Well, I'm going in and get Phil. Kathy! No, don't be alarmed, darling. I'm just going to take him over to see the cottage. I want him to see it before it gets dark. Well, darling, here it is, the house. No, oh, it's lovely, Kathy. Hey! Aren't you supposed to carry me across the threshold or something? <laughs> That's only if you refuse to marry me, in which case I just throw you in. Well. You did this all by yourself? Mm -hmm. Every bit of it. Phil, uh, about Tommy. You think you'll like it here? Tom? Mm -hmm. Oh, he'll be crazy about it. 
Tell me, uh, did you live here long? Mm, I never lived here. Oh, why not? Well, it's hard to explain. I love this house deeply. I started to build it when things first began to go wrong between Bill and me, and I poured all my hopes into it. And when it was finished, I knew I couldn't live here with someone I didn't really love. But, uh, after the divorce... No. I just stay at Jane's, and I come over here and poke around at the curtains and sit a while. But now, oh, Phil, you and I were going to be so happy here. This house. And I, we've been waiting for you. I was always waiting for you, I think. Oh, Kathy. Kathy, are you sure? Mm. You're really sure? Oh, darling. Then why can't we get married now? <laughs> oh, I want to feel. But could we make it just a, a little longer? I have a job, you know. I, I, I should give them some notice. Two weeks, dear. Is that too long? Much too long, darling. Much too long. Hey, Kathy, come on. We're going to be late for the theater. Loads of time. Look at the man, like an old married couple. And two <laughs> days before the wedding. Mrs. Emily, where's the honeymoon taking place? Or is it a secret? Oh, it's a big secret. We're going to flume in. Do you know it? Flume in? Mm hmm? You're kidding. What's the matter with Flume Inn? Well, it's restricted, that's all. Restricted? No Jews, huh? Oh, darling, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize when I sent the wire. It's all right, baby. It's all right. It's not your fault. Anne, are you sure? Of course I'm sure. But they confirmed the reservations. I'm not going to let them off the hook. Darling, we can go to the cottage. We won't even have to tell Jane we're there. Oh, sure. Sure. We can always go somewhere. I I'll get it. Those nasty little snobs aren't worth spreading over. There must be something to do besides just accepting this. No. Yes, dear. You Keep can't there. pin them down, huh? Phil. They never say it straight out or put it in writing. Phil? Phil, the phone. It's Tom, and he sounds frightened. Tom? Mm -hmm. Hello, Tom. What's up? Tom, listen. A medicine's in the cabinet. I'll be there in five minutes. What happened? I don't know. Ma, another attack, I guess. I'll get a cat. Wait, Phil. I'm going with you. <laughs> Darling, cheer up. Your mother's much better this morning. And postponing a wedding isn't the worst thing in the world. No, I suppose Just it isn't. Just a week. Two at the most, Dr. Abrams said. Well, if you're going to postpone the wedding, I... Guess I won't be here. Hey. What are you talking about? Well, I can't abandon my family forever, and I can't find a place to live, so I'm licked. But that means your job, your whole future. You know why I can't get a house to live in. <gasps> oh, Dave, I think it's terrible. I phoned Carol. I told her I'd give it one day more, but... So what's the matter with you? I'm going up to Flume Inn. What for, Phil? You're wasting your time. There must be a time once when you fight back. I want to make them look me in the eye and then do it. I want the satisfaction. I can't explain it, but I want to do it for myself. But still, people like that who restrict a place, they're, they're nothing more than... Let, let him do it, Kathy. You have to face them once. They're more than nasty little snobs, Kathy. You call them that and you can dismiss them. It's too easy. They're persistent little traitors to, to everything this country stands for. And you have to fight them. Anyway, I'm going. Phil, please. I'll be back late this afternoon. <laughs> In a moment, Act Three of Gentlemen's Agreement. Ladies, I feel sure you've never seen anything quite so exciting as the way new Rinso Blue washes all your white clothes whiter. That's right. Your sheets, your towels, your pillowcases, even nylon things wash whiter. It's a truly remarkable performance. And here are the facts behind it. New Rinso Blue is the new sky blue detergent that actually blues as it washes, right in your washing machine. And here's more exciting news. New Rinso Blue does a grand job on colored washables, too. Gets out the grimiest dirt, even from heavily soiled work clothes. 
you'll call New Rinso Blue the most wonderful detergent you ever used. Now remember, ladies, if your present detergent doesn't blue as it washes, it's obviously doing only half the job. Switch to remarkable new Rinso Blue soon, won't you? It washes whiter because it blues as it washes. And that's unconditionally guaranteed by Lever Brothers. We pause now for station identification. WRCA, WRCA FM, New York. on Act Three of Gentleman's Agreement, starring Ray Miland as Phil and Dorothy McGuire as Kathy. A few hours later, at the exclusive Bloom Inn, Phil Green presents himself at the registration desk. I have a reservation for a double room and bath today through Thursday. What uh, name, please? Green. Philip Green. Oh, yes, Mr. Green. Oh, boy, uh, Mr. Green's luggage? Ah, uh, there's just one thing. Yes, sir? Is this hotel restricted? Well, I'd hardly say it was restricted. Oh, then it's not restricted. Well, as a matter of fact... Uh, Mr. It... Adams, perhaps I can help Mr. Green. I'm the manager, Mr. Green. Oh, good. In answer to your question, may I inquire, are you... Uh, uh, that is, do you follow the Hebrew religion yourself, or do you just want to make sure... I asked a simple question. I'd like to have a simple answer. Well, you see, we have a very high-class clientele and, well, naturally... Then you do restrict your guests to Gentiles. I wouldn't say that, Mr. Green, but in any event, there seems to be some mistake because we don't have an available room in the entire hotel. I could fix you up at the Brewster Hotel. I am not staying at the Brewster. Look, I'm Jewish. You don't hate... You don't take Jews. That's it, isn't it? I never said that. If you don't accept you, say so. Don't you raise your voice to me, Mr. Green. Do you or don't you? Boy, please remove this luggage at once. Good day, Mr. Green. Phil? Oh, I'm so glad you're back. I thought maybe you'd phone. Well, I guess I should have. How is Ma, Kathy? Fine. She's sleeping. Tommy's out playing. It was bad, wasn't it? Hmm? I can tell by your face. Uh, Dave was right. It's a waste of time. Where is Dave? With Anne. He wanted one last night in the town. You know, I've just been thinking about him. And about the cottage, Phil? That Dave and his family could live there? Yes. I've thought about it, too. You must know that. It wouldn't work. Why not? Well, it would just be too uncomfortable for Dave in one of those neighborhoods. One of those neighborhoods? It's detestable, but that's the way it is. It's even worse in New Jordan. There, nobody can sell or rent with you. And even in Claremont, where Jane's house is and my house is, there's a sort of gentleman's agreement. That gentleman's you... agreement? Kathy, you can't! I see. Just give in. Play along. Let their idiotic rules stand. But, darling, what can one person do? You can do? tell them to go jump in the lake, but what can they do? Plenty. They can ostracize Dave. Some of the markets not deliver food, not even wait on him. Do you expect us to live in that cottage now that I know this? Face facts, Phil. You know I'm on Dave's side. Well, I'm not on Dave's side or on any side except against their side. Kathy, do you or don't you believe in this? Because if you don't, I... Well, hi, Pop. Tommy, do you mind? Kathy and I are talking. But, Pat, I... I... Tommy, hey, hey, hey. What's the matter? They called me a dirty Jew and a dirty kike. And they all ran off oh, and I... Oh, Tommy, come over here. Darling, mm. it's not true. It's not fair. You, you're no more Jewish than I am. It's a horrible mistake. Kathy. It... Tommy, come with me. We'll talk about it in the other room. <laughs> no. Just take it easy, son. Take it easy. How about a glass of water, huh? Thanks, Pop. Now, tell me. How did it happen? 
They said no dirty little Jew could play with them. Then they ran away. Why, Pop? Why? Tell me, did you want to tell them that you really weren't Jewish? No. Oh, that's good. That's wonderful. You see, there are a lot of kids just like you who are Jewish. And if you said it, it would be sort of admitting there was something bad in being Jewish and something swell in not. They wouldn't even fight. He just ran away. Yeah, yeah. I know. There's a lot of grown-ups just like that, too. Now, do you feel any better? I'm okay, Pop. Atta boy. Now, you go and read something while I talk to Kathy, huh? Okay. And look, uh, let's just keep this to ourselves until Grandma's well, huh? Okay. Okay. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Tommy. Bill? Well? I have something to tell you. I'm pretty tired of feeling wrong. Everything I do or say is wrong about anything Jewish. All I did just now was to face facts about Dave. And for you to tell Tom what you said just now... And what did you tell him? That he is the most wonderful of all creatures? A white, non-Jewish American? You instantly gave him that lovely taste of superiority. The poison that millions of parents drop into the minds of millions of children. You really think I'm anti-Semitic, don't you? No, Kathy, you do. I don't. You do. You've thought it for a long no. time. No. It's just that I've come to see that lots of nice people who aren't. People who despise and deplore it, help it along and, and then wonder why it grows. That's the biggest discovery I've made about this whole business. Oh, I hate it. I hate everything about this horrible thing. They always make trouble for everybody, even their friends. They force people to take time to kill. Don't stop it, Kathy. They didn't suggest this series. They didn't give me the angle. They haven't a single thing to do with what's happened between you and me. Don't count it, me. And don't treat me to any more lessons in tolerance. I'm I'm sick of it. I'm not going to marry into hot head shoutings and nerves. And you might as well know it now. Oh, Kathy. Please, I I'm sorry I shouted. It's not just the shouting, Theo. Now I know why I drew back when you first mentioned the angle. You are what you are for the one life you have. You can't help it if you were born Gentile instead of Jew. It doesn't mean that you're glad about it. But I'm glad. It'd be terrible. I'm glad I'm not. I could never make you understand that. That it's a fact. Like being glad you're good-looking instead of ugly, rich instead of poor, well instead of sick. Oh, I hate you for doing this, Phil. We had so much to enjoy, so much to share. I hate you for taking it away from both of us. Well, you can start typing, Miss Wales. Here are the first three installments. Send every ten pages downstairs to Mr. Menifee. Well, what's the matter? The title of the series... I was Jewish for six weeks. Mr. Green, you're a Gentile. Well, what's so upsetting about that? You mean there's some difference between Jews and Gentiles? Mr. Green. You just can't believe that anybody would give up the glory of being non-Jewish for even six weeks, can you? And if I tell you that that's anti-Semitism, the feeling that being Gentile is better than being Jewish, you're going to tell me I'm heckling you or twisting your words around. Look at me, Miss Wales. No different today than yesterday. Same face, same eyes, same nose, same everything. Here, take my hand. Feel it. Same flesh as yours, isn't it? Mr. Green, please. The only thing that's different is the word Gentile. Mr. Minifee should want me, I'll be at home. Hello? Bill Ann. Do you know what you've done to the office? Everybody's going crazy. What about? Well, your articles, of course, fill their tremendous. Minifee's proudest punch, incidentally, I am, too. Thank you. But shame on you all the same for fooling me. About not being Jewish, I mean. Bill, do you feel like talking? Not much, Ann. Well, just one thing. You and Kathy, it's over, isn't it? Yeah, I, I guess it is. Well, look, if you're free tonight, come over to my place, will you? Okay, thank you. For dinner, Phil. Just you and 
的。You know, Anne, you're quite a girl. Me? Oh, sure. Everybody loves Anne. Only there's something on your mind that you're afraid to talk about. Now, come on, Anne. All right. Let's clear the air. Do you mind if I say something about you and Kathy? Let's don't. Well, it's just that I think you're pretty straight, and she's... Drop it, Anne. Okay, I'm a cat, and this is Dirty Pool. But Kathy would rather let Dave lose that job than risk a fuss up there in Claremont because she's afraid. The Cathy's everywhere are afraid of getting the gate from their little groups of nice people. They haven't got the guts to take one little action on one little front. Phil, do you hate me for saying this? No, I, I don't hate anybody. Well, I'd like to say one more thing. Two people are right for each other. They usually discover it in time. And if I had a kid I loved, I'd want him to be brought up with people who felt the way I did about the basics. You proposing, Em? Maybe. Maybe I am. Hi, Kathy. I'm sorry I'm late. Hey, thanks for coming. I know you've got a train to catch. I won't keep you long. You know about Phil and me? Yes. Dave, I want an honest answer. Do you think I'm anti-Semitic? No, Kathy, I don't. Phil does. Does he? You know I'm not anti-Semitic. You're a Jew and you know it. I can make it clear to everyone but Phil. Why? I wish I knew. I hate this thing just as much as he does. Why can't he see it? Why, last night at dinner, a man told a, oh, a vicious little story, and I was ill. I was sick with rage and shame. Wait, wait, wait. What, what kind of a story, Kathy? Oh, just a story. He tried to get laughed with words like kike and coon. I despised him and everybody else at the table. Uh, what'd you do? What do you mean? Well, what'd you say when he finished? I wanted to yell at him, at everyone. Why do we sit here and take it when he's attacking everything we believe in? Why don't we call him on it? Uh, what did you do? I felt ashamed and sick. I still do. I, I wonder if you'd feel sick if you'd nailed him, Kathy. You know, there's, there's a funny kind of elation about socking back. I learned that a long time ago. Phil's learned it, too. And I haven't. Lots of things are pretty rough, Kathy. This is, well, just a, a, a different kind of a war. And anybody who crawls away is just as much well, of a... Well, somebody as... told a story, and the, the nice people didn't laugh... They even despised them for it, but they let it pass. And behind that joke is Flume in and Claremont and Tommy and the kids down the block. And if you don't challenge that joke, where do you make a stand? Is that what you mean? Yes, yes, that's what oh, I mean. I've been getting mad at Phil because he expected me to fight this thing. When I should be getting mad at people who help it along. If I'm just going to sit by and feel sick, then I'm not a fit wife to feel. He'll fight for it always, whatever he believes in. He'll always fight. And his wife must fight beside him instead of quarreling over issues. I guess I've known that all along. I just refuse to admit it until now. Kathy, Kathy, a, a man wants his wife to be more than a companion. He wants a sidekick to go through the rough spots with him and... Well, she has to feel that the same things are the rough spots of, or they're always out of step with each other. Honey, you're not cast in bronze. You're nice and soft and pliable. And you can do anything you want to do with yourself. Oh, Dave, can I? Are you sure? Tell me you're sure. <laughs> home early. Say, what's the big idea? You're supposed to be in bed. Don't scold, Phil. I couldn't sleep, so I sneaked into your room and stole the first installment. Phil, Phil, I want to kiss you. No, thanks, Ma. I think maybe I'd rather have that than almost anything. Mm, I wish your father could have read this, Phil. He'd have liked it. He'd have liked this. And as I drove away from that inn, I knew all about every man or woman who'd been told the job was filled when it wasn't. 
every youngster who had ever been turned down by a college or a summer camp. And I knew that they had somehow known it, too. Those patient, stubborn men who argued and fought and came up with the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. They knew that the tree is known by its fruit, and that when injustice corrupts a tree, its fruit shrivels and falls on that dark ground of history where other great hopes have rotted and died. Equality and freedom still remain the only basis for wholeness and soundness in a man or in a nation. No father would have liked to have you say that, Phil. But not enough of us realize it, Ma, and the time is getting short. You mean Kathy? No, no, not just Kathy. Lots of people. You know something, Phil? I suddenly want to live to be very old. I want to be here to see the beginning of people learning how to live together. Yes, I, I may stick around for quite a while yet. Dave? Oh, hello. Excuse me, i got to make a phone call. How do you feel, Ma? I just decided I'm not going to die. I've just decided something, too. Hello, Mr. Case? Dave Goldman. I'm sorry to call you at this late hour, but I can take that job. That's right, I, I got a house. Well, thanks. So am I. Dave, that's wonderful. It's Kathy's house, Ma. Up there in Claremont. She's going to live all summer at her sister's. And if anybody says anything, she... Hey, Phil. Phil, where are you going? Thanks, Dave. Thanks. Kathy? Oh, Kathy. Could we... Is there a chance? Don't, I mean... don't talk, darling. Just hold me, Phil. Just hold me. Now, here's Mr. Cummings with our star. And they step forward for a well-deserved curtain call. Ray Milland and Dorothy McGuire. <laughs> well, this being the month of March, we could discuss many things. St. Patrick's Day, spring. Income tax? No, no, that's in April now. Then let's talk about April. Because 20th Century Fox has a new CinemaScope production coming out that is a perfect story for Easter. A man called Peter. Oh, yes. I read the book a long time ago. No doubt, Dorothy, because it has been on the bestseller list for over two years. But in case anyone has missed it, A Man Called Peter is a story of one of the great preachers of our time, Peter Marshall. Written by his wife, Catherine Marshall. He was chaplain of the U.S. Senate until he died, wasn't he? Yes, but this isn't just the inspiring story of his ministry. Mm. It centers around the charming love story of the Marshalls. Peter Marshall is portrayed by Richard Todd and Catherine by Jean Peters. Well, I shall certainly see a man called Peter for Easter, as well as buy a new bonnet. Look, why do women always use Easter as an excuse to buy a new hat? Men don't. <laughs> Men buy hats to cover their heads. <laughs> women use them as frames to show off their lovely luxe complexions. <laughs> and if they don't... <laughs> if they don't have lovely luxe complexions, well... then they wear veils. Yes. Well, they certainly ought to. Because there's no reason why they shouldn't have Lux complexions. Lux soap is such an easy beauty care. It certainly is, Dorothy. Incidentally, 20th Century Fox has another fine picture opening soon. Prince of Players, starring Richard Burton, Maggie McNamara, and John Derrick. It's the story of a tragic Booth family, which also is part of our national history. And the family of great actors. Now, what about your actors for next week, Irving? We'll have an Academy Award winner, Donna Reed, and that popular young actor, Jeffrey Hunter. And we have chosen one of 20th Century Fox's most exciting dramas for them. A story of a young couple held as hostages by an escaped criminal in a lonely stagecoach station. It's the gripping drama, Rawhide. Certainly sounds exciting. Good night. Good night. Good night. And the best to both of us.